Hey, Al, thank you for allowing me to analyze your one-handed backhand. And today I'm going to compare you with Richard Gasquet, who's on the bottom of that screen. And what I like to do is kind of walk through each of your checkpoints um, on the one-handed backhand and tell you the things that you do well and the things that we need to change. Uh, and those checkpoints are the ready position, the unit turn, that's number two. Number three is our racket drop. Number four is contact. And number five is the extension. In my opinion, I believe your... Um, primary cause for your backhand right now is uh, within um, within the unit turn. That's your primary cause that we need to, to look at today. So what I would do is strongly suggest you working on one thing that I tell you until that gets um, to a level where that's efficient for you and then you work on something else. So uh, we're going to be focusing primarily on the unit turn which I think affects a lot of the other things that have, are what's going on, in my opinion. So when you go to Florida, you can you can have this with you. You can tell your uh, other pro that you're taking lessons with uh, and see what they think. Um, but in my opinion, um, this this stroke really starts to break down a little bit. The chain starts to break down in, in number two, the unit turn. And I'll give you some things that we can do t uh, to help you with that. Uh, but let's go ahead and get through um, this, this uh, one-handed backhand. I'm going to tell you the things that you do good in each and the things I would work on. So number one thing that you do really well within the ready position uh, is your feet uh, are parallel to the baseline, which I like. Um, your racket is in front of your body and you have bent knees okay and then believe it or not uh, in a little bit one of these shots you have your toes uh, your heels get up off the ground so you're on the balls of your feet which is outstanding so those are the things that I really like that you do the one thing I would change in your ready position is uh, or two things uh, number one see how your racket tips facing forward that racket tip should be going up. See how Gasquet should be facing up? It's a small little change, um, and we need to make sure that that racket tip is up, and it's going to help us with our unit turn. Uh, the other thing I want to, I'm going to just put this in red, is that um, you do a grip change, but I want you to have your forehand grip. Now, I think we were working on, we were obviously working on your one-handed backhand that day, uh, so I think you were just trying to hold a one-handed backhand grip, but always make sure you're in that forehand grip right at the beginning uh, that eastern or semi-western grip. So um, that's the big thing on uh, your your unit turn, okay? So um, what I really like also is when we start to get into now our second checkpoint, the unit turn, is that the grip changes. So when you do this, there it is. There's the grip change right there. See how quick that is and subtle? So I really like that. So we were working on that. That was our first big thing. There it is. See? You can really quickly see how that racket flips a little bit, and that's what we have, and that's really good. So good for you on that one. Here's where we start to break down. And if you look at this, when you go down, your turn for your one-handed backhand, the racket doesn't go up. You actually kind of start in this motion down. The racket comes down. Let's look at Richard Gasquet's backhand here. The racket tips up, and notice how his racket is going almost straight back. Okay, so it's up. See how the racket head stays up? And we'll freeze right about there because I think that's where he starts to drop right there. Okay, so there is his unit turn. And it's a little bit different. There's yours. Okay, I'll zoom out. There's your unit turn, much different. Notice how it's like a two-headed monster. You got a, you, both your rack head, they should be about the same height. And if we look at yours, here's your head, okay, right here. Here's your racket face, and the line here is really low. And look at Gasquet's, see, almost the same level, okay? That's something we have to fix. And so when Gasquet brings his racket back, right, imagine there's a line here Okay, going straight across his chest that his racket goes, look at that, it goes above that. Your line would be down here by your waist, right? You just, oops, you just drop it. Okay, and we really need to fix that. You know, yours is too low. So when there's the issue and I said, hey, it's your unit turn, right? Your racket goes down. That's the big thing. I God, I love that grip change, though. Okay, it goes down. That's our big, that's our big problem there. If you look at Gasquet, that racket tip, look, racket tip is up. He's just turning his body. That though Here's the turn. He's already done his grip change. Watch him right. If you watch, if you zoom in, you might be able to see it here. Right. There it is. There's his grip change. Okay. It's very subtle. Okay. 
So we're in our unit turn here, and let me get to Gasquet's unit turn right there, okay? So we talked about the racket head needing to be up. There's the change that we make. It's too low. Your racket has to be brought back higher up. And from remember, ready position, if your racket head is up, instead of facing forward, that's going to that's gonna get you to this. Remember, two-headed monster. You want your the height of your head... Uh, head, head of your the frame of your racket to be about the same height as your head. Okay. So um, the other thing that we need to talk about here is this left elbow. If your elbows are out, whoops. If your elbows are out on your ready position, that elbow needs to be out. What happened is it changes the racket face. When your elbow drops, you change the angle of your racket. And look how um, vertical his racket, his angle is here. Okay, um, I think we can do an angle here. Let me see. Let's do, I've never done this. There's the angle. So let's, oh no, we definitely don't want to do that. So I'm not going to pay for that. But your angle is way down, right? And your rack, whoops, your racket face is um, pointing down. And that's a that's a issue. We do want the racket face pointing down so it's neutral at uh, contact on checkpoint four. But his strings, notice his strings. If if you come through, they're going to be looking at me. If the, the, I'd be over here with the camera going that direction, so his strings should be looking at me. Your strings should be facing the camera, but they're facing down, and it's because of that elbow. That elbow has to be up, okay? And so that's that's the big issue. Now what happens here is watch Gasquet drop. Watch that beautiful drop that he has there. Okay, so now he's picking up the acceleration. His acceleration is picking up, so he's going to have a stronger backhand. It's going to come in like this motion, right? Watch. So it's dropping, boom, 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 up to contact. So when that racket face drops, he picks up acceleration. What happens here from your unit turn to racket drop, there is no racket drop. Your racket should be dropping anywhere from, you know, uh, 12 inches under the ball. Um, 12 to you know 18 inches on the ball, and that's hard to see, but it needs to come down and make that C kind of swing to get you that top spin. You're just not doing enough of that. See how straight that goes? Look, your racket almost goes straight through the ball. Okay, so that's what we got to change. It's got to go low to high. And the idea of that, how do we change that, is really thinking when you drop down, when that racket head like Gasquet's drop, watch his body. His body will also drop. Okay, his body's also going to come down a little bit. Not as much as I'd like. Watch and see how it goes low. Look, his hips bend just a t fraction, just a little bit. But you want to bend like you're sitting in a chair. And that's going to pick up extra power, more topspin. But when that racket drops, we got to bend our knees. Okay. And, and, and hit that ball, bend our knees into the shot and lift through the shot. It's a lifting shot, okay? Um, so that's what happened. That's what I saw on, on the racket drop. Remember, this is all stemming from, this all stems from that ready position. I think there's our turn, okay? And so the, the elbow should be bent, okay, should be up at least. Okay, and then let's look at a couple other things. So... I want to start the, the, the racket drop in position three, and I want to bring your attention to his elbow, his arm. His arm is straighter. I'd like it a little more straight, and you'll see once he gets down here, look how straight that arm is. Uh, look at our arms here. They're both really bent severely. And those hands uh, have to be, those arms have to be extended out, not to where you lock your elbows, but they need to be extended out, and that's why your hand's so close to your body, and that's why we, remember we talked about there. See that little wrist curl right there, it's because your arms are bent, hugging your body, that wrist curls. And we've got to get rid of that. And that just happens when you extend. So you, you we change that grip. And look at that extension now out here. You start to extend nicely with your arm. That needs to happen back. That needs to happen back here in the unit turn. It's got to be here. You've got to get that arm extended. Okay? And you can see Gasquet here as we're coming up to contact. That arm straight. Okay, we need your arms straight at contact. It does get there, but we need that to straighten out back in, in, in part two. And that will change with your unit turn. When we start working on the, on the cause, the unit turn, remember I said, is the issue. This stuff will f correct itself, a lot of it. Okay, so they all go together. 
As we're going to contact, what I really love is your ball is out in front of your body. Okay, we you know we primarily looked at that grip change. There's the extension I want to see in the arm. Okay, we don't want to have this arm um, bent. We need to have that arm going back here. So when we extend on when we get out to the extension, we'll talk about that. Okay, but look, Gasquet's arm is straight. Okay, yours is starting to straighten out, which is nice. Um, well out in front, 12 to 18 inches. We we can't get that on camera. We missed it, but you hit it somewhere out there, which is perfect right out in front of your body. When we get to the contact point, we should have our hips turning a little bit more. We want to work on our hip rotation going this way. I do love that when you come through, that back leg gets up. I'd like to see that maybe a little bit sooner. Okay, see how that heel's like kicking right there? Okay, a little dance move for you. Okay, so that overall is pretty good. Okay, we'll clear that out. And so there's our contact out in front. I don't see a lot of problem with your contact point. I think that's really good. Um, look at the angle. We just need to keep that angle all the way up through our follow through. Okay, so I like the grip. I like the extension out front. I'd just like to see more hip turn on that contact point. Okay, the last thing we want to talk about is step five or checkpoint five, the extension. Okay. You need to use that left hand as a counterweight. That left hand needs to be going back this way. Yours is going to the right. Gasquet doesn't do it much. See how it just snuck there? Look, just sneaks a little bit. But I want you to pretend like you're throwing a ball back there. Okay. Um, and what I'd like to see, I see how that wacket, wacket, racket whips around. Um, we want to keep that same angle all the way up into follow through. And I'll show you that. See how you turn it over? And you finish like Gasquet. See, look, you guys both kind of finish the same. I don't want you to finish the same way on the follow through. And we'll talk more about that in person. And when I go on court to add to this video, um, I'll show you what I mean by that. And that's the extension is what I would, I would, I want you to extend. And, and when you follow through that angle right there, that angle should follow it all the way up as you lift out. Yes, gay, I do like this video. I, I, that's the one thing I don't like about that is this follow through. Even though you guys have the same follow through, we are, we are not pros. So, um, we don't want to do that. Ideally, you want the racket to finish kind of like right here on the on the left side of your hand because your your it's your left handed shot, right? It's your your backhand. You're turned left. You want the racket to stay to the left of your body, stay to the left of your body there. Okay, so. Overall, Al, I think this is a really good backhand. We changed the grip, okay? Um, but again, I'm going to emphasize there, I really believe that this all starts on the unit turn right here. And I think if we bring that racket up higher, I think if we start with the racket tip up, I think if we turn and bring that racket higher and that back elbow, this back elbow, is up. I think we're gonna we're gonna change a lot of that. What's going on? So I would say that the unit turn is the next thing that um, we need to work on, um, and then we can go from there. So again, thank you very much for um, allowing me to um, analyze your one-handed backhand. Uh, the next step here is I will go on court and show you some drills that you're going to be able to do to to work on your one-handed backhand. Hey, Alan. Thanks for allowing me to look at your one-handed backhand so as you can see I'm on I'm on court now and mowers are going so hopefully you can hear me okay so I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that we worked on or have been working on with your one-handed backhand and one of the big things we talked about is your stance you have a tendency to kind of hold that that backhand grip right when we change that backhand grip okay if we if we look at it you were more of an Eastern okay uh, in a continental grip to now we've got it at that that um, eastern backhand grip so it should look like this if you're holding that up with your right hand kind of looking at this right okay so number one you would you would stand in ready position kind of like this with that backhand grip as we're working okay and you would kind of dip down with the racket facing the net we need that racket to be up and we need to be in that forehand ready position okay so this is how your ready position should look so a nice here ready position. Your non-dominant hand is on your throat. Okay, we want that elbow out, not tucked. Okay, so we this is the proper ready position we want you in right here. Okay, so from the front, okay, and to the side we want you here. 
okay, rack it head up. That was the first thing that we talked about. Number two was that grip change. And that grip change should happen as soon as your shoulders turn. As soon as you know it's a backhand, so I can, you can see my racket face, even if I do it slow, here's my forehand, it's a backhand and it turns. Look, here, before you even get that racket face back, you should have it turned into that proper backhand grip, that Eastern backhand grip, okay? So I want you to practice that maybe 10 times of ready position, turn, okay? Grip change, because we were having that grip change back here. You were here, and then we were seeing that grip change, and I, I want that grip change to happen earlier, okay? So that's the second thing I want you to practice. The other thing you and I talked about is that non-dominant elbow. And really what I want you to do um, is to practice and mirror that. So from our unit turn, remember that was our primary cause okay of what was going on with the one-handed backhand it was grip and then two on our unit turn we need that racket to be up and we talked about racket face being at the head level right and my elbow out so i want you to practice just shadow swinging like this so i would be here in ready position and turning and look that's what i want you to have okay and i'll back it up look how that elbow's out okay and from here i want you to practice the drop and the swing, okay? So, you can see my grip change. And there's the swing. You can even start from here, elbow up, and swing. And swing. So practice this 10, 15, 20 times. And you can go to ready position, then turn, and then practice the swing, and you can progress. I would recommend you start here, doing 10 of these. We can feed, have your pro in Florida feed you 10, 20, and you're hitting and extending, okay? And once you get there, from ready position, okay, and then do the swing, okay? So progressions, that's a shadow swing. So that's what I want you to work on to practice with that non-dominant elbow. Remember, that elbow being out, your hands off your body because you're getting them too close to your body and coming across. We need those hands out, almost like a beach ball kind of here in your body all the way through. We want those arms extended, right? That arm extended. So here, look at my arm extension, elbow bent, and as I come down, you can see the extension through, okay? So that's another thing we talked about for that one hand and back hand, okay? So remember, ready position, rack it up. Number two, we talked about grip change. Number three, elbow, non-dominant elbow up, right? Get that spacing here, rack it head high, okay? The other thing I want you to practice with that non-dominant arm is when you were, when you were hitting backhands, that arm would come forward. You need this as a counterweight to help that racket head accelerate for balance, okay? So I want you to practice when you're hitting backhands, tossing a ball behind you with your non-dominant arm. So if I was gonna hit a backhand, okay, I have a ball here, someone can feed you, I'm gonna just toss and hit, and I'm gonna look at just throwing that ball behind me, just getting rid of it. And I want you to practice that 10 times, 15, 20 times, okay? That's the idea. So here and just let that ball go. You don't even need someone to hit you a ball. You can just have it in your non-dominant hand. From here, when you're doing that one progression, right, with the elbow out and shadow swinging, just do this and throw that ball behind you. And that's where we want to finish, right? That pinch shoulder, okay? So the last little thing I want to show you is I gotta go get my chair and we'll talk about that video um, how to bend those knees. Hey Al, we got the chair out here. Uh, I'm gonna move it back just a little bit, maybe tell my camera for you. Okay. And the last thing we want to talk about is bending those knees. Okay, so we'll do a summary here at the end. But when you were hitting that backhand, we're two up in the air. The power comes from bending the knees and hitting and lifting up. Okay. And so I have a chair. This is a little bit lower chair than what I I think is just a standard chair, okay? But the idea is, every time you go to hit the ball, when you have that elbow up, so even when you practice shadow swing, pretend like you're sitting down and coming up. 
sitting down, coming up. Now you don't actually have to sit in a chair, okay? But you need to practice bending. So this can be done shadow. So look, practicing that elbow out and sitting down and coming up and finishing. You can have a pro toss you a ball. Okay, you're kind of here in that progression. Right ball gets tossed, bend and come up. It's a great visual aid for you. So in summary, what we want you to work on, on your own, is elbows out, ready position, right? Forehand grip. Ready position here, rack it up. Grip change, okay, we're gonna work on the grip change. Number two, your unit turn. Racket goes up, stays up, head high. Get that non-dominant arm out, and you shadow swing, right? Get to here, shadow swing, and you can go from here, and then from ready position and turn and do it. You can then add your chair, okay, as a great visual. From here and sit down and up, right? Sit down and up. From ready position, you can sit down and up. And then even here, you can add the ball. My last ball here, so I can go here, down, up, and throw. Those are the things you can actually practice on your own on a course without even hitting a ball, right? But then you can work on that with your pro uh, down in Florida as well. So Al, thanks again for allowing me to look at that one-handed backhand. It's improving every day. If you follow these suggestions, I guarantee you're gonna hit a, one, a better one-handed backhand and you are going to play better tennis.